In this section, our objective is to be able to solve a system of linear equations in two variables algebraically using the linear combination elimination method and solve real world problems involving linear systems. Examples, find the solution to the system of equations. Number one, last time we did the method of substitution. Let's review what that looks like. First of all, remember that a solution to a system of equations is an ordered pair that contains an x and a y that when plugged into each equation makes both of them true. We started by looking for the equation that has one variable that's almost already solved for. So this x doesn't have any number in front of it like the other variable terms. Let's take this equation to begin and get the x completely by itself. So we'll add 3y to both sides so that x equals 3y plus 7. Now we take the other equation, 2x plus 3y equals 20, and everything that x equals, we plug in where the x is in the other equation. This x is this x, so everything that x equals goes in there. So we'll write 2, and then instead of x, the quantity 3y plus 7 plus 3y equals 20. And now see we have an equation that's in terms of all of one variable. Let's distribute to solve this equation. 6y plus 14 plus 3y equals 20. Combine like terms, 9y plus 14 equals 20. Subtract 14 from both sides, 9y equals 6. And then divide both sides by 9. So y equals 6 divided by 9, but that simplifies into 2 thirds. Now that we know what y is, we can plug it in to either equation to figure out what the x is. So we go back up to one of these equations, like the x minus 3y equals 7 equation, and plug in here. x minus 3 times the y coordinate we got was 2 thirds equals 7. 3 times 2 thirds makes 2, so x minus 2 equals 7. And then adding 2 to both sides, x equals 9. So 9 is the x coordinate and 2 thirds is the y coordinate. So that's the process by substitution. However, elimination or linear combination is the way that we're going to practice it today. Linear combination is useful when both of these equations are in standard form because then we can line them up and combine, combination we think of combine, combine the two equations to make one equation. Let's write this system down again x minus 3y equals 7, and 2x plus 3y equals 20. Linear combination, we think combine. And when we think combine, we think add. So I'm going to add these two equations to make one equation. Now, how do I know that that's going to work? Well, I see that the y terms have opposite coefficients. See, what I mean here is negative 3y and positive 3y, such that when I add the y terms, they will go away. They will make 0y. Negative 3y, positive 3y, no y's left over. When I add 1x plus 2x, that makes 3x. So 3x equals 27. I have one equation left. And notice that's quite a simple equation. To solve, let's write down 3x equals 27 and go ahead and solve this equation. Divided by 3, divided by 3, so we get x equals 9. Now remember, our solution is going to be an ordered pair just like any time we solve it, any method. So I have the x-coordinate of 9. 
And see how quick that was to get the x coordinate compared to all the steps we had in substitution just to get one coordinate. Now that I know the x coordinate, just like substitution, I'm going to plug it back into one of these equations to get the y coordinate. So now let's go, let's pick either one, but the first one looks a little bit easier. So x minus 3y equals 7. So x is 9, so we'll put 9 in there where x was. So instead of the x, we're going to put 9. So 9 minus 3y equals 7. And then we'll solve. Nothing to multiply to 9. So trying to get y by itself, let's subtract 9 from both sides. Negative 3y equals negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 3. So y equals 2 thirds, just like we got from the substitution method, but we used linear combination. Let's review the steps for linear combination and solve another one using the linear combination method. So first of all, remember how we had to line up both, e both equations so that the variables were lined up, standard form, standard form, x, y, and constant. So in number two, that's what we need to do. Have the x's, then the y's, and then the constant. Write both equations in standard form. The first one is already in standard form, 5x plus 2y equals 11. However, the second one, notice that the y comes first, so we're going to need to do some rearranging. Let's rewrite this first equation, 5x plus 2y equals 11. And then let's rewrite the second one, but put the x term first, negative 5x plus 3y equals negative 21. Now we have the x's lined up, the y's lined up, the constants lined up, the equal signs lined up as well. Now we want to make sure the equations have one variable with opposite coefficients. Like we have here, the x's, positive 5 and negative 5. So we'll be able to make the x's go away this time or be eliminated. So let's now add these equations since we know the x's will make 0x. That's what we're doing next. We're adding, we're combining the two equations to make one equation. No more x's, positive 2y and positive 3y combined to make positive 5y. 11 and negative 21 combined to make negative 10. And then we can solve this equation. 5y equals negative 10. So let's divide both sides by 5. And we get that y equals negative 2. So we have half of our solution. Remember, the solution is always an ordered pair, and the y coordinate is negative 2. Now let's plug it into one of the first equations to find out what the other coordinate is. Solve the one variable equation. We did that. And then use this value to solve for the other variable, just like the substitution method. Notice that these last three steps are the same as the substitution method. Both methods gives us an equation where we have only one variable, and then we solve for the other variable, and then we check our solution in both equations. So let's go ahead and do the part where we have to plug it in to one of them. I'm going to pick the first one because they both look just as easy as each other or just as complicated. Pick the way you want to call it. So instead of the y, I'm going to put what the y equals into that first equation. And now I'll solve this. 5x, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. We'll add 4 on both sides of this equation. So 5x equals 15. Divide by both sides by 5. So x equals 3. And there we have our solution. 
Remember the way that you can check your solution with the calculator? Let's do a quick review of that. 3 is the x, negative 2 is the y. So let's store those values. 3 store to x, negative 2 store, here's the y in green, so alpha y. And let's type both of these, 5x plus 2y, 5x plus 2y, enter, I get 11. 11 is the answer, so far so good. And then 3y minus 5x. 3y minus 5x, I get negative 21, and negative 21 is the answer. So yes, it checks out, that is my solution. Number three. So the first thing to do is make sure that we have standard form. X is in front, then Y, then constants after the equal sign. Well, I have that. Then I have to make sure that the coefficients either for the X or the Y have opposite numbers. But I don't have that. Positive four, this should say negative four. Positive one, this should say negative one. Or, if this is negative 3, this should say positive 3. Positive 2, this should say negative 2. But we don't have that. So what do we do? We make it have that. Remember that we can alter an equation as long as we do something to both sides of it. So the easiest way to alter this one is to make this y have a negative 2. If this is positive 2, we want the y to have a negative 2. So I'm going to take that first equation, 4x plus y equals 9, and I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. Multiply both sides by negative 2. So we'll distribute, and we get negative 8x minus 2y equals negative 18. The other equation, we're not going to do anything to that, negative 3x plus 2y equals 7, because it already has a positive 2, and we were looking to get the other equation to have the opposite coefficient. Now I'm able to combine these two equations such that the y's will be eliminated. So let's go ahead and do that now. The y's are eliminated. I add the x's, negative 8x and negative 3x make negative 11x. Negative 18, positive 7 makes negative 11. Now I have an equation in one variable. Let's solve that equation. I need to divide by negative 11 on both sides so that x is by itself and x equals negative 1. So I'm halfway there to my solution. The x is negative 1. Now I need to find what the y is, so I'm going to use either of the original equations. I'm going to pick this one because it looks easier. 4x plus y equals 9. 4 times the x I'm plugging in is negative 1 plus y equals 9. That makes negative 4. Add 4 on both sides, so y equals 13. So 13 is the y coordinate, and now I have solved that system. Another way we can check our solution is by plugging our point into the other equation, the equation we didn't use. So let's try that now. 3x plus 2y equals 7. Let's take the negative 1 for x, plug it in and the 13 for y and plug it in. Negative 3 times negative 1 makes positive 3, and 2 times 13 makes 26, and uh-oh, 3 plus 26 makes 29. That does not equal 7. Let's take a look at where we might have made a mistake. Back up here, negative 11 divided by negative 11 
Oh, that makes positive 1. So we should have plugged in positive 1 into the equation. 4 times positive 1 makes positive 4, which means instead of adding 4 to both sides, we should have been subtracting 4. And that makes the y value 5. Let's try now plugging in positive 1, positive 5 into the other equation. Negative 3 times positive 1. 2 times positive 5, that makes negative 3 plus 10, and that in fact does make 7. So let's get rid of that incorrect solution and put the correct solution 1 comma 5. Number 4, 3x minus 2y equals 10, 4x plus 5y equals negative 25. Again, I don't have opposite coefficients. But now, this one's not as simple as just multiplying one equation by some number. So sometimes, we have to multiply both equations by some number. The easier one to take would be the one that already has opposite signs. In this case, that would be the y. So if I want both of these to be the same number but opposites, I might choose to multiply the 2 by the 5 and the 5 by the 2, and that would make them both 10. One would be negative 10, one would be positive 10. So let's do that one at a time. 3x minus 2y equals 10, and 4x plus 5y equals negative 25. This one, we said we'd multiply by 5 on both sides of the equation, and this one, we said we'd multiply by 2 on both sides of the equation. So now we'll distribute, and that'll make 15x minus 10y equals 50. And same in the other equation to distribute, and that'll make 8x plus 10y equal negative 50. Now we're able to combine these or add them because negative 10y and positive 10y make no more y's. They make zero y's. 15x plus 8x make 23x. 50 minus 50 or 50 plus negative 50 make zero. So 23x equals zero and now I can divide both sides by 23. That leaves us with x equals zero and zero is the first half of our solution. Now let's pick one of the original equations. The first one looks a little bit simpler because the numbers are a little bit smaller. 3x minus 2y equals 10, and let's plug the zero in where the x goes. So instead of x, we'll put that x value zero, and then the rest of the equation. Three times zero is zero, 0 minus 2y is negative 2y. That's the identity property of addition. Let's get the y by itself by dividing both sides by negative 2. And y equals negative 5. Take a couple of minutes to write a short summary. Describe the method of solving a linear system by linear combination. See you in class.